Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Would you stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of the Word of God, once you find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Toward the end of the chapter, we're going to read the last four verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Now, unsaved people think that's talking about running a race in order to get saved. That's not what it's talking about. Salvation is not a prize you win by strenuous effort. Salvation is a gift you receive by faith. No effort at all. So he's talking to save people to win a prize. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, we do it, we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Once again, people who can't rightly divide the word of truth and are trusting in their works to go to heaven, they think that Paul was saying, if he didn't stay with it, he was going to die and go to hell. That's not what it's talking about, as we'll... I give you in the introduction of the of the message. But I would like you to note the uh, exertion that he mentions about running, about fighting, about keeping his body under and bringing it into subjection. If you look at verse 27 one more time, we'll read that and use that as our text. We'll have prayer. You can be seated. Verse 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means... When I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let's bow our heads and hearts together for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I pray if there's anyone in this building who has never truly been born again by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, I pray that the Holy Spirit would reprove that person of sin, righteousness, and judgment and point them to that Savior who would receive that individual uh, to Himself that would come by faith. Father, bless Your children and strengthen them. I pray that we might see a child of God uh, make a step forward in uh, professing faith in Christ or getting baptized or joining this church or rededicating their life. Help them, Father, to overcome the hindrances of the world, the flesh, and the devil and to obey you today. Bless and make us a blessing is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated, please. As a Christian, my greatest desire is to see people saved. My greatest desire. As a pastor, uh, my next greatest desire is to see Christians grow in the Lord. And so, uh, for every one of you that ever sit under a message that I preach, I want you to know, even if I'm preaching against your sin, uh, my goal is, is to be an encouragement to you. My goal is, is to help you in your Christian walk. I believe that if you're in the right church with the right attitude, repeatedly, you can grow in the Lord as a Christian. That's my goal in this message. Paul said in our text that he did not want to be a castaway. Now, this did not mean, like some people believe, that he was feeling like he was in danger of losing his salvation. One of the basic truths of Christianity is that a person is not saved by his works. He's not kept saved by his works. 
One of the basic truths, I mean the foundational truths for a Christian is to know that he who is saved is saved forever. Isn't that a blessing? Yes, it doesn't matter whether they make fun of us or not and mock us and say, you're one of those OSAS people. Yeah. OSAS means once saved, always saved. Amen. Yep, that's me. Amen. I had a machinist in my first church. He used to tell people he worked with, he said, I couldn't go to hell if I had a going to hell machine. Yeah. And, uh, and the truth is, saved people are saved forever. We have Amen. eternal security. However, honest Christians will admit that it's possible. Honest Christians will admit that it's sometime in their lives, whether it be for a second or whether it be for an extended period of time, that it's possible and they have actually gotten off track. They've actually gotten uh, out of the will of God. They've actually got discouraged or disobedient. Do we have any Jonas here? Has there anybody been to Whale Theological Seminary? Yeah. Big yeah. Fish University. Yeah. Anybody, ever, anybody ever been there? Okay. We're just being honest. We're not bragging. We're not proud of it. I'm, I'm sure that Simon Peter was not proud of his laps there where he denied the Lord three times. But in honesty, he would look back and tell you, yes, it, it happened. Some Christians... Not only don't get off, or they get off track temporarily, but sadly, some Christians get what we Baptists call, they get put on the shelf. Yeah, that's right. That is, they just become bench warmers yeah. in the Lord's football game. Yeah. That is, they never participate in God's work hardly at all. Yeah. They become unusable yeah. through their own decisions in the work of God. <coughs> now the Christian life is compared to many things. You've seen that in our scripture reading. One of the things that it's compared to is a race. Another thing that it's compared to is a fight. Now fighting has always been a sport. I don't know about you ladies, but us guys, we're always interested in a fight. Any of you remember your old school days? I mean, if there was anything that could get the boys to hustling and running, it was uh, the sight of some fists moving around That's right. out on the playing field somewhere. Maybe a little bit of a dust storm getting up. And I mean tell you, everybody in school would act like it's a fire drill. Mm. <laughs> and they would get over there because they wanted to uh, see that fight. And some of you know what it's like to be married to somebody who's watching a fight. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, try to, you try to bring some food in there to your, to your husband. And it's hard to get to him because he's moving. Yeah. He's watching the fight. <laughs> okay. Uh, come on, anybody been there done that? Yeah. Um, but whether it be wrestling, whether it be boxing, whether it be martial arts, whatever you want to call it, the Apostle Paul, by inspiration of God, said that his service to Christ was like a fighter yeah. who was fighting to stay in the ring. Any of you? Now I realize that some of you are offended because I didn't mention wrestling as a sport. <laughs> it does take it does take training and uh, skill and uh, perseverance to be a championship wrestler. Yeah. Okay, it does. <laughs> and some of y'all have seen some of them got thrown out of the ring, right? And you've watched some of their tumbles and and all of that. Some of them get out of the ring uh, never to return. And whether it be the wrestling ring, and of course there's a difference between championship wrestling and college wrestling. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's also the ring of the boxer. Yeah. And, of other, and some people get cast out of the ring in the sense that they no longer get back in the ring. Yeah. And I want to title this morning's message with regard to Christian work and the comparison that the Apostle Paul gave, he said, uh, he said, so fight on. Yeah. Now I believe the Christian life is supposed to be a life of faith. And in that sense, in that sense, there should not be uh, strain <laughs> on you 
in the in that you're trusting God to get you through whatever. I understand that. But I also understand from this scripture and from others that the Apostle Paul uh, got involved in strain, in strenuous activity of mind and body as he served the Lord. He said uh, to some folks on you know, the Hebrews, he said, you've not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And he compared his ministry to running. <coughs> hey, folks, running is not the same as resting. I've done both. Yeah. Amen. Like a fellow said, he said, I was thinking real seriously about starting running, you know, a mile a day. But I found out that every morning that when I get that thought, if I would go sit down and have a cup of coffee, I'd get over it. And talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Running is not resting. And he said, he said, I therefore so run. Yeah. And then he said, so fight I. And he said, I keep under my body. It's like, it's like a wrestler keeping under his body. Yeah. I want to title the message, How to stay in the ring. Amen. How to stay in the ring. And you've got to depend on the Lord for strength and power. And the things that I'm going to give you are all in relationship to you, number one, knowing for sure you're saved. Yes. And then number two, drawing your endurance from the Lord God Almighty, okay. who is in you yeah. if you are saved. Okay. Philippians 4.13, anybody got that? Yeah. I can... Yeah. Do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. What I'm going to tell you basically is a is the solution uh, for backsliding by some negatives. In other words, I'm going to mention some some ways that Christians get off track. And some ways that Christians fall away from serving God. And I encourage you to do exactly the opposite. Maybe you've done some boxing, maybe you've done some wrestling. Maybe you've seen uh, been someone get thrown out of the ring. Maybe you've been thrown out of the ring yourself. Whether it be boxing or whatever, some people get put out of the ring through disqualification. Yeah. Some people get thrown out of the ring through desertion. Yeah. Some people get thrown out of the ring through defeat. And there are many Christian people in our town yeah. who don't serve the Lord. Sure. They used to. Yeah. Some of the ones who are not serving the Lord now used to serve the Lord. That's right. And I realize that as you get older, you physically won't be able to do everything yeah. that you used to do. Yeah. Right? right? I know there's people that all the time won't know. Yeah. Why is a preacher running around, jumping up on the pews and all? Because yeah. right now I still can. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> there's, there's coming a time, there's coming a time, there'll come a time when it'll be difficult for you yeah. to go door to door. There will come a time when it will be difficult for you to go to the hospital. Anybody, anybody found it to be a strenuous exercise for you to go visit someone at the hospital? And you find out that it's a mile away? Yeah. You know, going down all these hallways to get where, to get where you want to visit your loved one? There will come a time when you won't be able to. I would encourage you to do what you can while you can for the Lord as long as you can. Sadly, some of these people that used to be active don't even attend church now. Right. Now, there are some people who cannot attend church now. There are some people who are what we call shutting. Yeah. There are people that we, that we call uh, uh, people that are just through infirmity, yeah. you know, are, are not able. But what about these people that could? Yeah. And if you can go to Walmart, you can go on visitation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Visitation is a lot more safer than going to Walmart. Yeah. Uh, why is it that Christian people get knocked out of the Christian service? And why is it, and how can we, we, how can we learn something from what we know about competition in the ring? Because 1 Corinthians is written for your learning, and God has put a comparison in there using the Apostle Paul as the communicator to show you that there are some similarities between running a race, fighting a fight, being involved in keeping somebody under and your Christian service to God. Amen. One reason why some people don't do well and can't stay in the ring is poor preparation. Yeah. I know some of you have watched some boxing matches and you've looked at the... I know how men are. 
And they said, you know, I could probably go around or two. <laughs> and then when you hear what the payday is, yeah. and you hear that the, that the loser is going to get $3 million, yeah. you know, just for going in the ring, I know some of you guys, and I know how you think, you think, I would go in that ring against him yeah. for $3 million. Yeah. Let me say that if you're going to get in the ring, this first point is one you ought to be thinking about. That is preparation. Yeah. Poor preparation is why some people get knocked out of the ring. Uh, for instance, just talking about competition and all. I don't know if you remember us reading the verse, but 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. What's that talking about? That means... That if a fellow's going to be in a competition at 10 o'clock in the morning, he does not go to the buffet at 10 o'clock in the evening. Doesn't go to the buffet at 10 o'clock in the evening the day before. That's what I was trying to get you to do. Help him out, Miss O'Neill. Help her, help her out again. Okay. We'll just sit over there and see if you can help. 1 Corinthians 9, 25 says, Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Look down at verse 27 if you still have 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest it by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Bring it under my body may think you, make you think of a wrestling match. But hey, folks, have you ever been in a wrestling match with your body and you feel like you're losing? Sometimes you'll know if you're losing by looking in the mirror. Somebody said that a lot of these preachers that look like a Greek god in a $500 suit take off the suit and they look like a Greek restaurant. <laughs> okay. Um, fellow said, I got Dunlap's disease. My stomach done lapped over my belt. You know, that kind of thing. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys haven't seen your toes in forever. <laughs> All right, so we know what it's like to, uh, to think about and have to say to the, to the wife, Sugar, we've got to do something about this. We've got to get a more accurate set of scales. <laughs> These scales do not work. <coughs> You've been there, done that. You, you've really thought it's wishful thinking, but you're really hoping if you buy a new set of scales. And you know, you may have to get out alone. Just keep buying them until you get, get uh, one of those way you what, where you want it. But temperate in all things means you prepare for it. You, you did not binge on eating everything in sight right before you went to compete. You learned to be temperate in all things. Uh, somebody who messes up in, in that way can lose a really important bout uh, that he's fighting in, in the ring. Poor preparation. I'm saying some fighters lose their title because they let themselves get out of shape. They don't do what's necessary to be at their best. Now, Christian, if you're going to be involved in the work of God, you really need to count the cost. If you're going to do something for the Lord, you really ought to count the cost. I'm not trying to discourage you. We've got people here that I really hope, we've got visitors that I really hope that God will touch your heart to become a member of Glenwood Baptist Church this morning. I really hope we've got some people here that have that God will stir you up to where you make up your mind, I'm going to do something for God before God calls me home. Whatever your age is, whatever your physical ability is, I hope that you're encouraged to do something for God, to take a challenge from heaven and do something for the Lord. Amen. But I will say to you that it's going to be a whole lot better if you'll prepare yourself before you step in that ring. You step in there and you look at the other person in that ring and then you look down at yourself and you say, hmm, I didn't prepare. Poor preparation. One of the things that that an athlete does is disciplined eating. He has to discipline himself about his eating. Your proper diet will determine whether or not you're going to stay in the ring. As a Christian, listen to me. 
I'm saying you cannot stay in the ring for God <coughs> and neglect what God has given you for nutrition. Amen. This is what God has given you for nutrition. Yes. Not your television set. Yes. Not your books and your magazines and your internet and everything else. This is what God has given you for nutrition. Mm -hmm. I told somebody this morning, you cannot be a good growing Christian if you don't spend time in your Bible. And I'd recommend every last one of you start off your day every day with the Word of God. Amen. I started off my day this morning so I'd be able to tell you that I did and not have to lie about it. No. I started off my day this morning with the Word of God and prayer. And, it, and I'm not talking about studying for this message. I'm talking about reading the Bible to do something with me. Amen. I need to spiritually be in shape. Yes. There have been pastors of this church and pastors of churches you folks have belonged to who got off track. There have been Sunday school teachers of this church and Sunday school teachers of churches that you've belonged to other than this one who have gotten off track. Mm. And many times, one of the reasons was poor preparation. They did not take in their daily nutrition that they needed. That is this book right here, my friend. And if there's anything that I'm going to uh, rub in the ground for people who don't like to hear this particular admonition, you need to read your Bible Amen. every day. Amen. Read it every day. Memorize it. Live by it. Another thing that's even worse than discipline eating is daily exercise. If you want to be involved in Christian work, you just gotta have you're gonna have to work. Somebody said, My job is just so terrible. That's because it's a job. You say it tires me out. Yeah, that's because it's work. Preacher, you don't understand. I get headaches. I get tired. I, I get to aching. It. That's cause it's work. Yeah. Guess what? Work causes pain. Yeah. Now we don't. A lot of us have gotten out of that idea. So much of our our work has to be done with computers and sitting behind a desk. You do that long enough, you're gonna have problems too. That's right. You're gonna have pain. But daily exercise. What kind of exercise does a Christian do? He can, he can win souls. Mm -hmm. Amen. He can get out there and try to stretch his soul by talking to people. You know, we've got some folks here that you've got people sitting here because you got them here. <coughs> the Lord used you to invite them here and influence them to come here. But you know, some Christians, they never win a soul. Mm -hmm. Some Christians never bring their neighbors. They <coughs> never get their friends. They never get other visitors. To church because they don't ever get out there and try to do something. They don't ever try to work. They just come to church and sit and expect that God's going to make them into a great warrior for Christ. Truth is, folks, we don't get much of anywhere by just sitting. Amen. I mean, their idea of activity is picking up the remote control or moving the recliner into a, just a different angle. Folks, that's not service, that's not work. Another thing that's involved in preparing, I play tennis, but it's true in, in a lot of sports, and that is what we call drilling. Drilling, that is, you schedule to do the right thing over and over <coughs> and over. After Bible Institute last night, I was, I was challenging and playing ping pong with uh, one of our young men of our church. How young? Less than half my age. Okay. I used to play basketball. I used to play basketball with guys in, in South Carolina because the building that my wife and I lived in was an old Christian school. And we had a basketball court in there. It was a gymnasium. And it really was discouraging to me because I was playing with these guys and trying to keep up with them, you know, and I'd be huffing and puffing. And, all. and then I started asking them how old they were, and I don't, I'm not sure there was one over 30. I think they were all, as O'Neill remembers, I think they were all in their 20s. Luke was probably about 26 back in the day, but his wife got saved, and that was a, that was a blessing. 
But it's a thing of scheduling uh, to do right. That means you make up your mind, I'm going to be in Sunday school. And if you're going to be in Sunday school, you can't be in Sunday school if you stay up all night on Saturday night. You better go to bed on Saturday night and schedule to get up. And get up and stay up and go to Sunday school. Scheduling to read your Bible. Drilling is where you, you do it because you need to do it. You just do it over and over and over. Guy I was playing ping pong with, you need to join us tonight after church. Now, join us for church, okay? Don't come for the ping pong after church. But if you want to hang around after church and play some ping pong. I was hitting with this fella, and I, and I told him, I, I said, you know what? You're getting better than you used to be. You're getting those balls back you used to not get back. And it's true in the Christian life. It's easier for you to make it to Sunday night services. <laughs> yeah, preacher, go ahead and tell them. If you do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know, I don't have to wrestle all the time about some of these things because of drilling. That's right. Because of drilling. There's some things I don't have to wrestle with. If this guy goes to sleep on me while I'm preaching, I have to wrestle with not coming over here and shaking his bed and, 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 and waking him up. But if you drill, you do it over and over and over and over, you don't even think about it. Right. Come on, some of you, you shave out of habit. That's you can right. shave with your eyes closed. Okay? Some of you don't know where your razor is because you don't have a habit. <laughs> but if you have a habit of, of good things, we're talking about preparation. Most fighters... Boy, they think they can do it. They think they can do it. But if they haven't prepared, they're going to find out after the thing's over, oh, I should have drilled more. Which brings me to my second point. And probably one of the people that you can think of that got off track more so than anybody was, a, was one of the apostles. Simon Peter. Y'all remember Simon Peter? Yep. Probably he had this problem. And the second point is, is one of the reasons why people get knocked off track is what I'm going to call proud presumption. Mm -hmm. That is, you think that you know enough, you think that you're old enough in the Lord to where you're not susceptible to getting off track. Mm -hmm. Proud presumption. Y'all remember what Peter said? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you're all going to be offended of me this night. Jesus, and P Peter said, though all men deny you, I won't deny you. You know what the Bible says about that? It says, pride goeth before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. That's Proverbs 16, 18. Whatever your ability is, excuse my grammar, it ain't nothing without Jesus. Amen. He said, without me, ye can do nothing. John 15, 5. Consider, concerning your awareness, the Bible says, if a man thinketh that he knows something, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Don't be so proud, self-assured, before you go in the ring. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, they, boy, they, they can tell what they're going to do until... I heard one fellow say about a contender that was going to challenge him. He says, he says that he can handle you in the first round. What do you have to say about that? And he said, yep. He said, that's what they all say until I hit them the first punch. <laughs> probably guess who I'm talking about, those of you who do. <laughs> do you know that if you're not sober, then you're not aware of your inabilities? Anybody had to live with a drunk? Yeah. One thing about a drunk, characteristic of a drunk, is that he thinks that he is just as sharp as he was when he was sober. Yeah. You can't tell. I've been drinking, can you? <laughs> They're not aware that they're not aware that they're not standing up straight. They think they're the greatest lover, they think they're the greatest fighter, they think they're the greatest race car driver yeah. while they're drinking. If you're sober, you're aware of your limitations. Third thing that I want to say that, that many fighters could have stayed in the ring except for what I'm going to call personal preoccupation. And what I mean by that is something became more important to you. And it got you preoccupied mm -hmm. so that you no longer felt like it was as important to show up for practice, for the drills, for the sparring, or whatever. 
Many Christians, yes, they love the Lord. And yes, they've read their Bibles. And yes, they have learned some of the great doctrines of the faith. But they got off track because they got preoccupied with something that might not even be a sin in itself, but they just got distracted. Do you know that marriage itself can be a distraction? When the Apostle Paul recommended the single life in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he said, This I speak for your own profit, not that I might cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. I'm saying, you can get distracted. Some people get distracted uh, with profit. And they don't feel the need to serve the Lord like they used to. There's a lot of Christian businessmen in America that are not dedicated to the Lord like they used to. Saved. And they do some things for the Lord, but they're not dedicated to the Lord like they used to because they've gotten, they've gotten distracted. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people get distracted by pleasure. I mean, things that may not necessarily be uh, sinful, but, you, but I mean, the Bible says the Lord giveth us richly all things for to enjoy. It doesn't say that. I, I'm not saying you cannot enjoy life. I enjoy living for God, and I enjoy life. Can you tell? I'm having a good time. Say, so, yeah, because you're the preacher, and you get to move around. I'm having to sit here and listen. <laughs> I understand that. But it's possible for you to enjoy what you're doing. It's possible for you to enjoy life without getting to the point to where when Sunday morning comes, you can't come to church because that you did what you should on Saturday. Oh, I just got nothing left, preacher. My Sundays is just my only day of rest. So you give the Lord the leftovers, do you? Personal preoccupation. Demas hath forsaken me, the Apostle Paul wrote. Demas at one point was his fellow laborer. But in 2 Timothy 4.10 he said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. My friend, you can be preoccupied. Preoccupied with profit, making money. Preoccupied with pleasure. Another thing that I'll mention that has kept many people out of the ring and not serving the Lord is things that are prohibited. Prohibited procedures. I'm saying doing things that the rule book tells you you can't do. I realize that ping pong is not much of a sport, but when you're as old as I am, when you get there playing ping pong, when you're done, you feel like you've exercised. We were talking about it last night at the Bible Institute. You know, I don't know what the rule is on that thing. But if you don't obey the rules, then you're not going to get the prize. Mm -hmm. Paul said, As, but one receiveth the prize. Mm -hmm. In another place, the Apostle Paul wrote, If a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except, he's not crowned except he strive lawfully. 2 Timothy 2 5. In other words, you can't just do anything to accomplish what you want to. This church cannot just do anything. We've got to do what is right in order to receive a well done from our Heavenly Father. I'll go ahead and mention a name now. I've tried to refrain from it, but I'll go ahead and mention a name. Because if I just tell you the illustration, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's only one fighter that I've known of in my lifetime who got known over the world for biting off a man's ear. <laughs> He got disqualified, his boxing license got revoked for a brief period, and he was fined $3 million. I don't know if it was worth it to him or not for, you know, losing his temper and doing what he felt like that he had to do to win that fight. But disregarding the rules is not going to keep you in the ring. You're going to get knocked out. And this is the rule book. Beloved, this is the book that governs God's churches. Amen. This is the book that governs you as an individual. Amen. This is the rule book. You need to learn it. Another way that you can get knocked out of the ring with disobeying uh, procedures is disobeying the referee. Or you can get disqualified for delaying your participation. That is, you don't show up on time. 
And so you're disqualified because that you didn't make it. Then I'm going to close with this, this uh, last thought of why some people don't make it in the ring. And I want to encourage, I want to encourage you. I, I believe a Christian ought to pace himself. I believe in patience in the in living for Jesus. Patience in your race. Patience in your fight and in everything. But I really believe that you need to have a winning mentality in the sense that you're not just going to try to read your Bible. And that you're not just going to try to make it to Sunday school. You folks, have, you, some of you have heard me say it. You've said, see you Sunday preacher. And I said, well, I'm going to try to be there. And when I say it, you look at me strange. I say, well, nothing don't happen. Nothing comes up. I'm planning on being there. What I'm saying is when somebody says that, it doesn't seem like their heart is really in it. And so I'm going to call this point that knocks some people out of the ring as far as a boxing man. I'm going to call it powder puff punching. Powder puff punching. <coughs> fella said, fella, fella said, that's what they all say until I hit them the first time. His punch was not a powder puff punch. It was a shocking punch. You know, there's some people that their living for God and their battle for the Lord is about as wimpy as anything you've ever seen. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be able to turn on the radio and hear some preachers preach that I mean really were shelling the corn. I'm talking about preaching against it, whatever it is, and naming it. And not being afraid <coughs> to preach against whatever the thing is that is bad wrong. Powder puff punching. First Corinthians 9, 6, 26, Paul said here in our scripture reading, he said, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Yeah. Anybody remember watching Ali? Remember those people that would fight against him and he would dodge every shot? <coughs> and they'd be swinging at him all the time. And his head would be way back here, you know. <laughs> and they would never hit him. You know, there's some preachers that preach on everything in the sun except what the people need to hear. They preach against everything that all the other churches are doing in all the other countries, but not what we need here in the United States. Powder puff free. punching is what it is. They don't have the eye of the tiger. That is, they don't have the will to win. Paul said, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, whatsoever thy hand findeth it to do, do it with thy might. Mm. Ecclesiastes 9 10. Anybody remember the judge named Ehud? Yeah. Ehud? Y'all remember the story of Ehud and Eglon? No. Eglon, the big fat king. Mm. Remember Ehud coming in and, and he says, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king. Mm. I have a message unto thee, O king. Y'all remember he got the point of the message, didn't he? Yeah. Right. The message was that dagger. Mm -hmm. And he got that dagger out. Do you remember the way it's worded in the Bible? He thrust it into the king. And he thrust it in with such force. That the heft is what the Bible calls it. Disappeared. I mean he, there was enough tissue there. Where he went in and went through. And it was gone. <coughs> That's the way I want to see you serve God. I mean, give it, boom! Yep. Oh, you got, oh, you got. Amen. I like to see somebody every now and then just really go for it. Yeah. <coughs> if you'll let me, I'm going to talk about somebody who's not here. <laughs> we'll use them as an illustration. And if they, if they watch this on YouTube and get upset, I'll just tell them that's what happens when you fly away and go to Texas. Mm. <laughs> we got a couple in our church got married a year ago, and uh, I... I tell you what, I'm having such a good time with uh, Brother Taylor singing. Mm -hmm. Okay? I enjoy somebody going for it with their singing. I enjoy our deacon singing. Ms. O'Neill stands in front of him and I enjoy watching her hair move. <laughs> When Brother, Ron, when Brother Ron gets excited and starts singing out, 
Ms. O'Neill's hair. I know the Holy Spirit's moving in this place. <laughs> Any of y'all heard of Taylor Harmon sing? Yeah. Boy, can that boy sing. Yeah. I mean, he gets with it. There was a time when he hadn't had got everything figured out, and he couldn't, couldn't figure out if he wanted to go up higher or just go down an octave lower because such a stretch, you know, to get up there. And then finally he got a hold of that, got to hang on it. And boy, he can't sing. Mm -hmm. He's led singing for us here. He's done a good job. Of course, Brother, brother Ron's led singing for decades here. But, uh, but he goes for it. That reminds me of either mm -hmm. Going for it. <coughs> if I get Ron Hugh on one side, Taylor Harmon on the other side, Really, you guys can all be beginners in the middle. Yeah. Because, I mean, they just blast out Amen. singing for the glory of God. Amen. They're reminding me of Ehud. Boom! Yeah. Put that through there. Maybe sometimes you say, boy, the preacher sure is active. That's the way I want to be. Amen. I want to serve God without powder put. put. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, lift him up off the floor. Lift him up off the mat. Boom! With an uppercut for Jesus. Amen. Our effort should not be indecisive. He said, so far I am not as uncertainly. Our effort should not be inaccurate. Not as one that beat it the air. Our effort should be right on target. Filled with the Spirit of God. Backed by the power of God. I believe one reason that so many Christians get thrown out of the ring is there's so much lazy, half-hearted, Powder puff preaching. Powder puff attending church. Powder puff singing. Powder puff giving. Powder puff amen. Powder puff repenting. Powder puff service to God. Powder puff resisting of the devil. Powder puff praying. Powder puff soul winning. Powder puff Bible reading and studying. Folks, we need to get in there and boom! Hit one for Jesus. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. We stand together, please. Heads bowed. You've been really attentive for a long time. Thank you.